trust you! Oh, get up, get up! <laughs> At least figure out what entails to complete it. Well, let's escort this group to the town, and then we can cash in on the contract, or at least talk to them about what we need to do. Okay, sure, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so, there, it's about, like, an hour and a half remaining trip. Uh, they gotta load up their cart and stuff, haul back up with the materials. We help them and stuff. That's cool. I hide in a bush. <laughs> no, you get out of here, and you help us. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> They're appreciative. Um, they're willing to share some gossip about uh, the town or the wolf raids, if you desire. Uh, yeah, yeah what, what, what is this? Uh, so Derek starts saying, uh, all this started when uh, the sorcerer father, Merrickson's brother, upped and disappeared. Not that I'd hear a word against him, of course, but it makes you think about it, don't it? And then, uh, Donuts. what's the other guy's name? Yosef. Oh, Yosef, that's it. <laughs> okay, and then Yosef says, Yeah, first side, something out of the unusual is going on. Came when the Petersons up on Spurks Hill had a dozen sheep snatched from inside a barn. The boy got thrashed something awful for failing to close it, but a week later, the exact same thing happened. Even though old Peterson had locked it up himself. Mm, the wolves be Did smart, Did Peterson so get a thrashing, then? <laughs> Uh, can I roll a knowledge? Um, Let me actually look at my stuff. Like intelligence? Do you, do you have I'm knowledge? gonna roll my wits. For what? Uh, to see if I can understand or... Hmm. I want wait, to wait. see... What? Go ahead, sorry. Uh, I want to see if I can make the connection uh, that... Uh, some magical connection as to whether or not the wolves... Uh, can open and manipulate doors. If there's something in my knowledge of sorcery, I think I can. And I think I can help because because I'm like an uh, uh, I'm a tribal woodsman person and I have high intelligence. So could I assist him to give him advantage? Sure. Let's. Uh, so I'm gonna make Patrick roll, and I'll give him a plus. Wait, how do you know about wood stuff, Wes? I'm a outlaw wood shaman. I'm a tribal person trying to... Well, okay. I don't actually... But that's not actually true, because my origin story is I came to this warp gate and don't have any memories anymore. So, yeah. um, let's just say I have, a, I have a natural connection to the natural world with my uh, intellect. Alright, I'll give uh, Patrick a bonus. Cool. Um, and uh, that's going to be an intelligence check. Not intelligence? A okay. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let me make, make, let me do the check then. I got fifteen intelligence. Okay, hold on. Let me hold yeah, it. Then. Patrick said he wanted to. If I roll try, twenty, I'm gonna be try. mad. <laughs> well, I mean, it's always possible. <laughs> you roll. You could always assist me and give me the bonus. I don't have shit for intelligence though. But you could. But this my, isn't my... Dungeons and Dragons, dude. Or. Yeah, but I mean, we're kind of making. It behaves differently, yeah. <laughs> I got an okay. 18! Nice. <laughs> Patch got a three. Alright, yeah. <laughs> so as far as you can tell is wolves don't aren't able to open doors. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> natural creatures. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Damn, wolves are Man, way so, smarter than me. Uh, I'm so glad I have intelligence, I would have never done that! <laughs> <laughs> Thank god Wes is here. <laughs> yeah. And as you continue down the road, um, they're just telling you various stories that they can think of just to kind of fill you in. It is a long trip. Uh, Derek remembers another one. He says, uh, uh, Wheatley, who sells pots and pans, white mints here about, was chased off his cart by a pack of wolves. It says they appeared from the trees as by magic. When he went back with some village lads, the horses were gone, and th so were their sacks of thick litter and planning on trade. Sounds like, uh, it looks like they're actually targeting human is merchants. behind this. Yeah, guys, 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 best friends huddle. Best these friend. wolves are like, these wolves are fucking, well, this, this um, had to say. being controlled by Not somebody. Zen. Like, this is yeah, like some extra, some extra magical shit. We, we should, there's more here than just wild animals. We should ask uh, Derek, for double Derek, payment. It's a Derek, druid or something, or Derek a wizard nods or a at you. scoundrel. Derek nods at you, what? kind of, in like, oh, that could be possible kind of fashion. He says, 
Old Shepherd named Grimstone, uh, I don't remember his voice. Old Shepherd named Grimstone up Cadbury Way was watching his flock when he heard Colin from the trees, begging for help. Well, he runs off to check what was wrong, but he couldn't find so much as a gnome out there. While he was away, guess what? A dozen sheep of us just up and disappeared. A month or so ago, a band of blokes from the village were out to hunt the wolves, track them back to their den. But as soon as they were in the darkest parts of the woods, they were ambushed. Wasn't there myself, but some of them told, tell of boom and thunder. Others burst of fire, sound like an unholy mess. Anyway, an un a halfling named Featherrock, decent shepherd, was hurt real bad in the fight. All the others thought he was dead, but next morning he's found dumped on the Wesley's doorstep at the granary near the woods. Poor man ain't been the same since. Tells wild tales and voices in the night. Cracked in the head, they say. That's done. Let's head to the town. You want to head to town? I say Let's we do... get to the town pretty quickly. Let's do some more detective take care work. Of this guy. Yeah, the detective work. This shit. All right. Yeah, I just find out put all an we arrow right between his and... eyes, and then we call it good. No detective work needed there. <laughs> all the detective work is where his eyes are, so I can shoot. Him. All right. Exactly. So you're just, like, arriving up put on an Welton. Arrow. Welton sits on the banks of gentle hills rising up on each side. The houses and shops are generally made of oak painted bright white, and many have elaborate carvings worked into the eaves. Wheat and sheep farming donate, dominate the local economy, and people pay more attention to the weather and wool prices that, than rumors of distant wars or disasters. The vast majority of the population are human, though there is a sizable majority of halflings and a handful of dwarves. While it is by no means a rich village, Welton isn't poverty-stricken, either. The village offers little beyond a small general store and virtually nothing of interest to outsiders other than the Shepherd's Crook, which happens to be hosting a village council meeting. We should listen in. Listen so to the want... evil council. You want to go to the Shepherd's <laughs> Crook? Maybe, yeah, but subtly. We not necessarily kick the door down. Like, yeah, I say we in. just kind of walk by and start trying to eavesdrop. Nick. <laughs> Sneaky <laughs> McGee, uh, Patrick, Niscala can probably get there. Oh, yeah, you, you in? Maybe me and me and Nick will hang back, and you guys can go take a listen. Uh, I'll give it a whirl. Maybe you guys I'm more thievery than I am sneaking, but I can give her a try. As you Ooh, walk yeah. in, you see. I thought I had a explanation of what this place looked like. I do. Oh, I can always bring. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the explanation of this area. This ancient. Uh, hey, Kevin, can I say it? Sure, go for it. With so many extra people staying at the village, the inn no, is always crowded. No, you gotta scroll up, scroll up. Oh, fuck. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> this ancient inn is one of the oldest and largest buildings of the village, sitting opposite side of both the Grouse Hall and Fleece's Hall. It is a traditional inn with a common room in the main area and a private dining and meeting room at the back of the guest rooms upstairs. With so many extra people staying in the village, the inn is always crowded. Tanned and weather beaten shepherds in the wool cloaks smoke long stem pipes while drinking cider and beers whilst muttering among themselves. The innkeeper, Oas, a dwarven woman, Nyaung, no more slate beard. She runs the bar while her husband, Beteth, deals with both the kitchen and the brewing. Yeah, that's a uh, keyboard typos. That's yeah, why I know. I know how it's supposed <laughs> to read. <laughs> Maybe I should read from here on out. Okay, Man, so that's Devin, the information. I just, I just gotta say, Devin, I really appreciate the world building you've done here. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's, it's very awesome, awesome really cool. I, it's awesome. Fucking badass, dude. Uh, so, you walk into this inn. Sorry, I'm gonna be pausing these as soon as you go to a new area so you don't just go that's flabbergasting fine. somewhere. Because oh, yeah, that's story. cool. Because we totally will if you don't. Yeah, yeah no, that's how this game <laughs> works. Uh, so, you just kinda... so you walk in. Uh, Book it. Very, it's a very, it's a pretty lavish inn. It's very well maintained, very brightly lit. Uh, as you saw or heard in the outpost, it's not poor, but it's not rich either. Uh, but it's nice and homey. Uh, as you walk in, you see a dwarf woman walking by with a tray full of uh, mugs of drinks, beers, and ales, walking by. And she sees you walk in. She kind of raises her eyebrows and looks at you, and says. Welcome to the Shepherd's Crook. What can I do you for? Let's get a I table walk and around. To her. Let's get a table well, and around. We don't have any money, so. Yeah. Oh, we wait, don't have shit, much money. Right. So Hold let on. me. I'll try let to uh, talk gonna... and persuade to her. Yeah, go ahead and talk to her first. 
Okay. Hey, man, okay. Tim, you've got a bunch of stuff in your bag you could sell off and then treat us to a round of beers. Yeah, Tim. I could do that. <laughs> no, that's fine, too. Hey, I'm just picking up whatever you assholes just leave behind, so I'm one of those low-level characters. I'm going to ask the right bar maiden thing where we can sell some trinkets and wares. I'm just going to sell them all to her. Hang on. Uh, yeah, you can trade with her, technically. Uh, but she brings, she starts talking to you. She's like, well... You can really sell anything around anywhere. Uh, I just did. Anything of value, I'll take off your hands. How do but I there's. I just there's... sold everything to her, so. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> there's kind of a crooky old man down the road. Man, my vo accents keep changing with hers. <laughs> <It's all right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his strange fella he is, but he seems to always come across very strange wares. If you want. Go check him out. His name is Yef. Thank you. But also, before you leave, my dear lady, we would like to know about this wolf contract and uh, if there's anything you can tell us about it. She looks yes. at you excitedly and says, You're here to see about the wolf problem. Are you adventurous? Aye, Aye the best of what we can do, so... She, excitedly, she, she claps her hands together as she throws the plate up in the air so she can clap, obviously. <laughs> and she says, I'm gonna try and catch it. Well, catch bless it. my boy. Try to catch the beer. I'm gonna try and catch the beer. <laughs> uh, she catches it. She just did it excitedly. She said, but bless my bum. Adventure is finally coming to help. These darn military folks just run in and then just run right back out, stealing all our foods. You know what? Thank you for coming. Hope you can help our contract. Talk to the mayor in the area. He'll set you up. But you know what? Free lodging and drinks on the house. Enjoy Thank your stay. You yes. yes. ah, yes. This is the best I ever. Right. I'm gonna scoop her up and give her a kiss. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I, right. I know I don't look very inviting, so. So, uh, <laughs> you, you guys wanna? You you can take a seat. Whatever you wanna do, she'll bring you beers or whatever. Yeah. I just took a seat. Yeah. All right, let me uh, let me get you some beers. Man, I do not look comfortable when I sit down. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you look like you're like ready to like just kind of lose your lunch. You're like all the way over. Oh, I don't I'm feel just, good. Like, I'm furiously chugging a beer right now. Patrick, oh, what are you doing? I'm mugging He's a beer. The piano. There's beers yeah. on this table here. I'm gonna drink my uh, beer. I'm gonna say Consume. you didn't walk in there, Patrick, because uh, there's shit going on yeah, in there. Yeah, I'm drunk. I mean, uh, 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 oh, I had a heart attack. Oh, no. I can't even move. Woo. Oh, wow, I'm exactly. really drunk. I'm a lightweight. Uh, All right, there we uh, go. Yeah, I only had one I was done, beer. too. Uh, oh, I forgot to bring something up. Uh, as you were walking into town with the shepherds, uh, I forgot to bring this up. I wanted to explain Welton. Yeah. Um, there are many more people are idling in the street than would be expected at this time of year. Uh, many appear to be openly concerned and maybe hungry or worried about food. Uh, us unusually heavy traffic and the impact of uh, many hooves have reduced the dirt streets to muddy quagmires in places. And that's why uh, the inn is so full. It's because a lot of military people have been running through. Tim, did you sell your amulet to the bartender lady? No, there was just one laying on the ground, so I grabbed it, and then I sold it to her. So there was just a random one laying on the ground. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, oh, neat. All right, I'll take it, and then I give it back to her. So. Um, as... I pay attention to my surroundings. Okay. Tim looks like he's in the area. Right, Tim, as you're approaching that area, that's where the council meeting is actually being held. Is that uh, that people near the... Uh, cool. Near well, the... I'm going to RP this drunk, so let's do it. Yeah, so uh, uh, the area with the I'm piano. Visible. <laughs> um, so... that... I'm actually invisible, so give me a second. Okay. We had a plan. No, no, because gonna... you're paused, Patrick. We were going to listen to it casually. Okay. Uh, the meeting is being yeah, held. Yeah, but I'm drunk now, so we decided <laughs> to drink before we did this. The so meeting the is being changed. held in the common room. 
As you approach, you are able to hear raised voices, and when you enter, you see a halfling bitterly arguing with a human dressed in priestly robes about whether the village should stop exporting its grain and other foods while the crisis with the wolves remains unsolved. Mm. Let's listen. Yes, let's oh. listen in. So you're gonna... Hang on. Uh, well, I'm right here, tried... so I'm listening. I had a question. Can you guys give me just a sec? Go for it. Yeah. Um, I was trying to sell stuff to this lady, and I didn't get any money out of it for some reason. Did I do Excuse something? You. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say give me money for it. You just said, here, have this exactly. for free. <laughs> oh, there is a uh, bar yeah. up at the top yeah. that you hit, and it will uh, add your wages or their wages in the gold. Sorry, dude. I didn't know oh. you were trying to do that. Hold on. I would have let right. you know. That is a little goofy. We're gonna be noobs for a little while, Nick. I'm gonna be learning shit too. Yeah. yeah. Here, Nick. Oh, alrighty. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say, you can sell this. Maybe. Manage. Here, Nick. I'm giving something that you can sell to her to hopefully make up for the issues that stuff you sold. Hang on. I go. just picked up a golden lever for some reason. Yes, that's what I, I gave you it... to sell to the lady. I can't move though. Yeah, it's encumbered. <laughs> it's that heavy? That's hilarious. It's okay. Insanely heavy. <laughs> Delete. Alright, how much gold do you have? It was just 23 gold, so. Right, but you have like a million now. Oh, I sure do. Alright. I don't know cool. how to give <laughs> smaller stacks of gold. I think the economy's going out the window here. <laughs> <laughs> here, there, sell that spoon. That's worth 20. Perfect. And Patrick's just dying in the middle of the room. That's not gonna be inconspicuous at all. Oh god, someone died. Oh well, no anyways, noticed. what were we talking about? No one noticed me. Oh no! <laughs> It'll happen to you too. <laughs> okay, so what are you guys doing? Let's listen uh, in. I'm yeah. listening in on that, but I'm kind of belligerent and drunk, so we'll see how this okay. goes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Patrick, you may want to move your microphone to your mouth. Yeah, I'm over here. Okay. Um, so, you can't hear that much, but it's mostly bickering on uh, Tillis Marion. He's the... Uh, here, let's give you uh, an explanation of him, shall we? Is one of these guys the mayor? Yes. Father uh, Merrickson, is he the mayor? I'm gonna look to, to, to catch their attention whenever possible. Oh well, no, I lost I more stuff. Do. That so, sucks. Let's do, it. Let's, do it. let's do it. Hold on a second. So I'm gonna ex Here we go. Uh, one of them uh, is the, the short halfling there. He's a proud, blustering halfling who leads the Welton Grower and Buyers Association. Uh, this association represents the most powerful group in the village, and it is uh, its leader, Tillis, acts as the de facto mayor and head of the council. So that's uh, th who that halfling is. So he's trying to negotiate with the priestly guy, saying, no, we need to make our quotas, we need to s sell our goods and stuff to make good on our contracts, even if our people starve. We need to... He, the, he's been in uh, the city council for long enough that he's making good on the credit of Welton, and he's actually brought prosperity to Welton because of these contracts. And he's worried that if they get in bad credit, people are going to stop trading them, and Welton will be worse off. Father Merrickson, on the other hand, is like, our people need to be well taken care of first, uh, kind of thing. He's play in the humanities approach. That's all you can overhear without really interjecting. Well, maybe you should hire some real adventurers who can do the job right the first time instead of hiring all of these incompetent officials to do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> but let me no. tell you, it, it won't be cheap. We are the best Tillis in the land. Re let's, Tillis let's, reacts let's, angrily let's to you at first. Friend. He reacts angrily to you at the interruption at first, but at the mention of the adventurer, he kind of uh, calms down uh, when she mentioned you will help with the wolf problem. 
Um, helped. helped. He, he says there, he, he'll say the council <laughs> is has already offered a contract of 800 gold pieces, free lodging, and other small favors. Uh, is this not something you can bargain with? It's really all we can afford. It's like, well, we already killed a few of these wolves, and you can point an extra 200 gold on top of it. A thousand gold I do not see is unreasonable for the extermination of these feral beasts and this this man that we know that is controlling them. Let That's me right, tell you have, that. We have information that they don't have. These people don't know that these beasts are being enhanced or even. And that's um, why. I think we a deserve... thousand gold is extra no, we... compensation and fair as well to take care of them. Tillis gonna... grabs his beard and strokes it, and he's looks at his books where he keeps all his ledgers and numbers of how the town works, and he says, like, we've, we're offering you free lodging. I don't know that it's possible for us to give an extra 200 gold without taking it from amongst the people. And as he says so, um, Alex Marison, the priest, shows up, and he begins talking to you. Very soft-spoken man. Uh, he... Sorry. Loading stuff. He... I loaded up the wrong thing. No! My stuff is all broken. Um, he's a local priest. His name is Johan Marikson. Uh, he says, I was born and bred in Welton, and I love both the village and its inhabitants. I would like nothing more than to see its countrymen safe. But to that end, I don't believe the countrymen can be safe if they are getting robbed of their already uh, problematic issues that we've been experiencing with these wolves. I think the problem is uh, deeper than you realize, sir. Come, have a drink with us. We can discuss these issues along with the other ones plaguing your town. Very well. Uh, Merrickson and, uh, Tillis will join you for a drink. Uh, Merrickson will start off, um, I should ex actually explain. Merrickson and Tillis are the ones bickering, but everyone in here is part of the council. So uh, they answer... Oh. Yeah. Um, but Tillis and Merrickson, they hold some pretty good sway. They're like the main speakers. Um, anyway, Merrickson says... The village's usual protector, my brother, and sorcerer named Alexei went missing at around the same time the attacks began, forcing the council to turn to professional aid adventurers for aid. We, we says, are I those adventurers. Our, our, our group is a long and lustrous line of conquests. Many so adventurers have come, and many have either abandoned the quests or been slain. This is why we are so low on funds. We've paid many up front for the dispensation of these wolves, and they either didn't return or they ran off with the money. Can I try Please, a persuasion? Please, I beg check? you. Uh, persuasion? Sure. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to quickly grab Onyx and pull him aside and be like, wait, wait, Slain? Are we going to get killed trying to get like enough money to live? <laughs> be grand to die gloriously in battle, brother. Oh, uh, fuck, Ron. We're on different Come on, points. don't be a. <laughs> yeah, you're Ron. talking to the wrong person there. He's like, no, for honor and glory. We're going Tim. down in battle. Tim, do you have any bonuses <laughs> to persuasion? I do. I have plus one persuasion. Okay, and are you still drunk? Because I was going to give him a minus. Yeah. Uh, really? Help. Because every other thing. You're not drunk. Drinking. You're not yeah, drunk. Not anymore. You're good. It's been you're good. enough time. Okay. Um, you. What are you trying to persuade him with exactly? Just tell them that we aren't the same kind of adventurers who's come by and boasted. We we mean what we say. We're here to do a job, and we we stand firm on our word that we will get it done and be back. We're firm on being able to accomplish our jobs, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. 19. All right. Merrickson says, he looks at you sternly, trying to size you all up. He says, I believe you. Nonetheless, I cannot see a way that we can offer more than we already have. We've already maxed out at the GP. Maybe we can uh, give you a better lodging 
situation here uh, than the common rooms. But I don't know if we can afford wait, anymore. Wait. I think I think I have a, a good solution to this. I'm gonna pull best friends club aside and whisper, look, guys, I don't know about you, but I don't remember much of anything else before this town, before these people. This seems like a worthy enough cause to give a shit about. I feel like we could cash we could get more invested in these people in their times, and that could be our price. Let's ask for a membership on the council. I agree. I don't know why we're so <laughs> invested in, like, swindling them out of more money. We could just have no, no, no. I don't know. No, I thought that's what the gain of this people was, because that's all we've been doing, is talking about swindling everybody we've met so but far. That, that Sorry. Has been me. I have that figured has been that's me. what you wanted to do, so that's now you're all me. of a sudden flipping a 180. <laughs> <laughs> well, because... I, I, I don't know. know. Never mind. Like, you guys can't. do what you think is right. Let's so. be not no. assholes. Let's be cool. Because I was okay. trying to not be an asshole, and nobody no, was agreeing no, no. with me, so do whatever we want. My whole point was we, we literally can't do it, so let's just... And that's fine. Down. Let's... I just say we do it. I was for just saving everyone in the very first place, and everyone's like, no, we need to make money. And now I'm saying we need to make money, and... So <laughs> we uh, just go ahead and you do... Let's just do whatever we want to do. I'm just here okay. to kill things, so... Alright, okay. let's say All that right, none of that just that. happened, <laughs> and they're, you're no, sitting no. down with them. <laughs> And they'll explain to you it's what not that it else didn't they happen, know. It's just we can stop trying. <laughs> okay, then that happened. Then you you just kind of accepted the 800 gold pieces, which is actually a lot of money. No, that's totally uh, fine. Uh, uh, but anyways, so they're sitting with you, um, and you've agreed upon the terms, and they're going to give you some more information that they do know. Is uh, from anyone in this room, they're trying to give you as much information as possible because this has been such a problem to them they want you guys to be loaded up with whatever you can uh, once person says the wolves have been driving people out of their farm and outlaying hamlets taking entire herds of sheep as well as cattle pigs and chickens they've been acting in a way that is unusually effective such as ambushing shepherds as well as as they move their flocks opening gates and pulling down fences there have always been wolves in the woods but in the span of three months they have gone from a nuisance to a major threat to the village People have been abandoning their farms out of fear, leaving the village to either stop exporting the crops that they have already been and harvested and risk bankruptcy, or to go hungry. And that's why they can't offer it anymore. Uh, no, it, sound, it sounds like these wolves or whoever's controlling them is intelligent enough that could be reasoned with. We might be able to... Uh, maybe we could gain information and, and figure out why the hell they're doing this, or what is causing this. We should, we should, we should covertly gather information. Yes. Okay. Let me take this guy. And uh, why can't I possess him? There we go. This guy walks up. Little dwarf man. He, he was just kind of been observing and over, just listening everything that's been going on. And he comes up, introduces himself, he puts his fist to his chest. Coral of the Fleecers Guild. I've been working on the hills for the best part of 60 years, and I'd be happy to answer any questions of the local environment and provide any support you may need. Do you know what might be controlling these wolves? Controlling the wolves? No, I don't know what that actually could mean, but it, we have our friend here, Mr. Featherrock, the one that was attacked. He's just upstairs healing up from his wounds. He's kind of cracked in the head. See what you can get out of him, but I believe you may find some information from him as well. If you be needing any supplies, I'd be happy to help. And then he walks away. Alright, do we have to spend gold for then that? Then he walks like away. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any money! No, he's gone! <laughs> okay, let's, let's, go, let's go interrogate this guy. Who are you interrogating? Or not He's interrogate. Let's go. Let's go talk to the dude who got his head cracked open. Not interrogate. Oh, Feather Rock. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Talk to him. <laughs> All right. As you walk in, uh, they they tell you, Leonor, the dwarf lady, fills you in to uh, the room, but she gives you a word of caution. She's like, "Please, be nice to the poor man. He's gone through enough." And then he... The room is small, but well-appointed with fresh flowers on the dresser. Halfling lies in the bed, white-faced and soaked in his own sweat. His left arm is bandaged, as is bandaged, as is his right leg. Oh. 
badly injured when the villagers sent a posse to hunt down the wolves, Featherrock has been left badly damaged by his experience, both mentally and physically. He is currently laid up where he is regularly attended by Father Merkinson. I say we appoint one of us to go talk to this fellow instead of all of us running up to him at once. I'd say either Nick or Tim, now that Nate, Tim's not drunk anymore, because <laughs> Patrick could scare the fuck out of him, and I'm also a dragon person, um, could talk to him and try and coax some information out, right? Best friends huddle? Let, let Tim do it. I think he's probably going to be better at that than me. Yeah. All right. You got this, Tim. Okay, what do you want me to say to him? I mean, I guess whatever information we can get, right? Uh, yeah, what just, he's seen just and... ask him about where it happens, the situation in which it occurred, uh, any suspicious people he was having around him, stuff like that. Okay. All right, as I you approach down... him, Tim... Uh, he kind of shies away from you at first. I slow down, take a couple steps forward, and kneel towards the bed very slowly and lay my hand on the side of the bed and say we are just here for information, nothing more. <coughs> what information could you possibly need? We just need to know where this has come from. Everything Patrick just said. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, you mean the wolves attack? Yes, we are here to stop them. Gain revenge you here to for make... you. <coughs> you. You here to make fun of me too? Never. That is not what I'm here to do. I'm here to avenge you. Make sure that this doesn't happen to anybody else. There's no no need to make fun of you. You fought very, very valiantly. You made it back alive. That should say something. Like a halfway against a bunch of freaking Most... wolves. <laughs> Most that I've heard have turned in tail and fleed like cowards as you stand and stand sternly footed and fought valiantly like a warrior. You did not go down and you returned home. I say no, that that is, you, is a victory in its own. He slowly... Don't not take a bath over there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he painfully decides to prop himself up on the bed. You could see him wincing in pain, still fresh wounds, bleeding. Uh, Father Merrickson has been attending to him. That for giving him fresh bandages. He responds to you saying, "When the posse <coughs> was attacked, I was bitten badly and I was trampled. <coughs> as the other men fled, I drifted in and out of consciousness. But I remember gruff voices arguing in their darkness and a powerful grip on my ankle. <coughs> <coughs> you won't believe anything else I tell you over this, but." I believe the wolves were speaking to one another. Oh, maybe it is a kind. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's the wolves becoming sentient. That could be. Thank you for Shit. your time. Can you tell me exactly where these attacks happened? They they happened <laughs> just outside of the granary, on the way to their cave. <laughs> I was part of the posse. We were going to ambush them, but they knew we were coming. <laughs> I can still hear them talking, whether they were going to eat me or not. I don't know. The dreams, they're coming. <coughs> and then he breaks down in hysterical fits before passing out. We won't let you down. We will destroy these wolves, no matter what controls them. This poor fucker. Damn. Right? Let's go kill some wolves. <laughs> So, maybe sounds we, like they're, sounds like, uh, maybe yeah. Maybe we can reason with them. It sounds like they're, they might be getting smart enough that we could tell them to go kill wild sheep. Well, remember, they managed to open a door at some point, so somebody's still helping them. But they were talking Probably. to I mean, it can be both. It's true. We're, we, I, we're, we're theory crafting here. What time is it? Like, actual time? No. In game. Oh, uh, like three in the afternoon. Okay. Okay. Well, we have. I'd say most of these attacks have happened at night, so we have either time to sleep or drink. <laughs> I'm gonna drink. <laughs> That's a good call. You're gonna, formula, you're gonna formulate a plan. I'll be right back, guys. One sec.
Do you want to involve any of the council members or just you guys? It's up to you guys. The less they know, the less they can fuck it up. Sounds like they've been making wrong decisions anyways. I guess we can make make our own this time and see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of gold. This is this was supposed to be your starting gold. I didn't mean to make you level up. Damn it. Woo! I'll take that over the gold. Uh, I'm lowering your guys' level again. Sorry. Aww. That was not supposed to happen. Where's the other person? There you are. Ugh. Did you guys okay, still get sorry. skill points from that? Yeah. Yeah. Can I oh. those somehow? Yeah, they're still stuck there. Should I not spend oh, no. these points? Okay. No, uh, don't yeah, don't spend them yet. And then, because uh, I can see on your screen that you still have them. And then when okay. you level up, I won't do the level that gives you stuff. I'll just let you spend the points. Okay. Because uh, you're level twos, right? Yeah, you're level twos. We're good. Okay. Uh, so what do you guys want to do? You, you going to hang out here till night or? Because the wolves attack at any point in the day. Like, you guys got attacked just now. Oh, but with night, we might be able to ambush them. Should we go as soon as possible, or try to sneak up on them during the evening? I don't know. I figured these were like real wolves, and they were nocturnal, so they were going to attack more at night. But we can attack whenever. I was just going to drink till we were going to get ready, so whatever you guys want to do. Well, they keep... Tim from drinking. Let's go attack right now. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Freaking already drink. drunk, so let's do it. <laughs> oh no! It's too late. <laughs> okay, so uh, Coral the dwarf uh, explains to you where you can get to, where the halfling and the other posse around the area they were attacked. They were able to uh, find part of the wolf's den. And I'm gonna make sure that you guys spawn properly. Yes, okay. we better go find the whole part of the wolf's den now, shall we? Let's do it, buddy. Man, this game surprises me how freaking beautiful it is every time. You're still drinking! <laughs> I'm drinking now. I got him on the go. Oh no, do I have any beer? I do! Alright, I'll have a bottle of beer too. <laughs> no, and we lost. Someone left. Someone left? Lose? Hello? Nick? Who left? <laughs> Nick. Nick, oh, bummer. Okay, we'll pause. Nick could crash completely. Yeah, I think his whole computer died if he dropped out of chat. Yeah, even Steam. Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode of Trust the Arrow. We hope you enjoyed the video and our shenanigans. If you did, consider throwing a like and a comment in the video and maybe click that subscribe button. We certainly appreciate you being here. Hope you tune in next time with us, and may your arrow fly straight and your aim be true.